My God, I'm so lonely, so I open a window to hear sounds of people, to hear sounds of people. Venus, planet of love, was destroyed by global warming. Did its people want too much to? Did its people want too much? And I don't want your pity, I just want somebody near me. Guess I'm a coward, I just want to feel alright. And I know no one will save me, I just want someone to kiss. Give me one good movie kiss and I'll be all right. I swear that song isn't as sad as it sounds when you hear the actual music that goes to it. The lyrics are just kind of devastating. But um, that's Mitski, if you don't know. Check her out. She's not just like for sad girls even though I am a sad girl. She's she's for other people too. She's like a really good songwriter. Um, anyway, I'm Liv and here we are. This video is a little bit different. I am showing my little mini haul of Blu-rays from uh, Phoenix when my boyfriend and I went to Phoenix months ago, well like a month and a half ago, um, and I went to Zia Records and they have like all sorts of stuff there, but I basically didn't make it past like the first couple tables because they had a ton of $2.99 Blu-rays and that's kind of something I really love to do is just like look through like the cheapest of the cheap movies for ones I've never heard of that sound interesting. So most of these are blind buys. Um, let me know in the comments if you've seen any of them, what you thought about them. There's a lot of like kind of in the horror arena, thriller. Um, there were a lot of Nick Cage movies <laughs> in the three, in the two ninety nine Blu-rays. And I had to narrow it down to one. I think I only got one, maybe two. I can't remember, but there were so many. But I got like 10, what did I get? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. I got 13 movies total. 12 of them were the 2 dollars And then one of them was $9.99. And that one was also a blind buy. But um, yeah. This one is not a blind buy. It's one of my favorite comedies. Role Models uh, with Paul Rudd, Sean William Scott. The kid that played McLovin, Christopher Mintz, Plus, Plus, uh, Elizabeth Banks, and this little kid, Bobby, what is his name? Bobby J. Thompson. He's probably like the highlight of the movie. He's hysterical. But um, my boyfriend kind of put off watching it because he thought it was like in the same vein as like all of the Judd Apatow movies around that same time because Paul Rudd is in this, Paul Rudd is in some Judd Apatow knocked up, you know, but um, it's got a little Apatow vibe going on, but it's actually uh, Paul Rudd wrote it with some of his buddies and let's see. Screenplay by Paul Rudd, David Wayne, W-A-I-N, I'm not familiar, Ken Marino, who is uh, Ron from Party Down, and he's also in this and plays a funny character, and then Timothy Dowling, which I should have looked those names up because I'm not familiar with those, but um, it's really funny. It's not just like an Apatow type of comedy. Um, there's more to it. And if you like the world of, like, LARPing and, like, <laughs> fantasy stuff like this, um, a lot of the movie actually goes into, like, his whole LARPing crew, 
and it's like a really big deal and it's fantastic to watch. So next, my goodness, this one I haven't seen, but I remember watching the trailer for it and um, being really intrigued and uh, it has a lot of good actors in it. So sorry, three billboards outside uh, Ebbing, Missouri. It's got Frances McDormand, who is just amazing in everything. Um, Fargo, the movie, being one of my faves of hers. Uh, Woody Harrelson and Sam Rockwell. Those faces, if you don't know the names, they're in a lot of stuff. But let's see. Uh, this darkly comic drama um, hailed as one of the year's best films. A murdered girl's defiant mother, that's Frances, boldly paints three local billboards, each with a controversial, controversial message, igniting a furious battle with a volatile, I cannot read today, <laughs> volatile cop, played by Rockwell, and the town's revered chief of police, played by Harrelson. So, um, very intriguing, and, uh, yeah. I know that like Frances McDormand is awesome in anything and everything. I still haven't seen Nomadland, but I know that's another one that I have to see that I hear she is fantastic in. Um, this is another one that I actually don't know much about at all, but um, I know a lot of people love it. Super 8. So uh, yeah, produced by Spielberg, writer-director J.J. Abrams. I don't really have any feelings one way or another about J.J. Abrams. I don't know. I don't really care. Um, they join forces in this extraordinary tale of youth, mystery, and adventure. It tells the story of six friends who witness a train wreck while making E. Yikes. Timely. A uh, train wreck while making a Super 8 movie, only to learn that something unimaginable escaped during the crash. They soon discover that the only thing more mysterious than what it is, is what it wants. Dun, dun, dun. Experience the film that critics rave is filled with unstoppable imagination and visual effects to spare. It will put a spell on you. Um, so, yeah, I've actually heard like a lot of good things about this. So, if you've seen it, I know it's an older one, but I just never got around to seeing it. And didn't even really know much about it until it kept popping up in um, Facebook movie groups that I'm in. People like recommending it as like a good movie by J.J. Abrams that uh, is like a good like kid centric story. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm excited to watch that. Cool. Next is Ha Split. Um, I love a Shyamalan, Shyamalan, I'm just gonna, I don't know, um, but yeah, okay, according to Alex Welsh from IGN, this is one of M. Night Shyam Shyamalan's best films, period. That's what Alex says. So, um, I've actually heard multiple things, mul like, from multiple people, even that, like, don't like much of... M. Night stuff that this is a good one. I'm down for M. Night. Good, bad, ugly. Give it all to me, please. I will gladly watch it. Uh, let's see. James McAvoy, he's fine. He was in that one where they bent the bullet. Uh, they didn't bend it. Curved it. What's that one? Wanted? That could be something different. But that's what I'm thinking. He was good in that, I think, if I remember. That came out a long time ago. Okay, what is this? This is writer, director, producer, M. Knight. I'm not going to even pronounce his last name because you know who I'm talking about. Returns with an original thriller that delves into the mysterious recesses of one man's fractured, gifted mind. Though Kevin... McAvoy has rep has revealed 23 personalities to his psychiatrist. Whoa, wee! There remains one still submerged, 
Ooh, okay, I'm intrigued. Who is set to materialize and dominate all the others. Compelled to abduct three teenage girls? Oh no. Kevin reaches a war for survival among all of those contained within him, as well as everyone around him. As the walls between his compartments shatter apart. Um, so yeah, intrigue. Yes, please. Um, so all of these are kind of like horror, thriller, mystery realm. Well, except for role models so far. Um, okay, and then this one, I kind of got... Okay, I didn't get duped by it, but like, I saw it, right? Shark Knight looks like a fun time. Terror has surfaced. I can read backwards. Okay, and it says, from the director of The Final Destination which I read as from the director of Final Destination, and I got really excited. I don't know why. I don't even know. I just really love Final Destination, but it could be more of like a, I saw it when I was 10, so it's like a warm fuzzy, and like Devin Sawa and Casper, and, you know, now and then, and all the things. But, um, where were we? Shark Knight. The, the final destination was the f f the fourth or fifth one. I can't even, I never remember how many there are. And I love the third one. That one's probably my favorite. I can't remember the others besides the first. But the final destination was not the final. I think there's another one. Um, either coming out or came out or... It's one of those franchises that you're just like, oh, another, okay, whatever. Anyway, same director as The Final Destination. Dream Getaway becomes a blood-soaked nightmare for seven... <laughs> I got this one. I really got these all, not from the cover per se, but from the little blurb on the back, and then like maybe if there was someone recognizable in it. But this one, the very first sentence is so good. A dream getaway becomes a blood-soaked nightmare for seven scantily clad college students. <laughs> Why they gotta be scantily clad? I guess because they're in the water, but it's just funny. Okay. Uh, in this terrifying action thriller from the director of The Final Destination and Snakes on a Plane, which I still have yet to see. When Sarah and her friends arrive at her family's Louisiana Lake, Louisiana Lake House, they quickly strip down <laughs> to their swimsuits for a weekend of sexy fun in the sun. But they soon discover the lake is infested with hundreds of, of flesh-eating sharks. What? Is that a thing in Louisiana? I don't know. I've never been there, but that doesn't sound quite right. Uh, a few equally dangerous human predators that take their killer vacation into a bone-crunching battle to stay alive. How can you not? How can you not get that? Ah, a bone-crunching battle. Sounds a little different now that I actually had some bones crunch, but I haven't really looked into these much since I grabbed them many, many weeks ago. So this is fun for me. What else we got? This is the Nick. Nick Cage. Next. Classic Nick Cage. Jessica Biel also. And Julianne Moore, which like, babes. Mega babes. Um, Julianne Moore is actually really good at acting. That's all I have to say about that. Nick Cage can be very good at acting. I do think that he's a genius. I really do, truly. I think that there may be some things wrong with him neurologically, but um, I think that he is a genius at his craft in, sometimes. And if you haven't seen Vampire's Kiss, I urge you to see it if you like bad or weird movies. If you're not into that kind of stuff, then you probably won't like it. But 
mm, every time I watch it, I like it more and more. And I keep thinking that, like, I think Nick Cage is misunderstood, his acting in that movie. I think he's actually really good. And he just plays a, ma a man going mad very, very convincingly. Um, but I think a lot of people would disagree with me <laughs> about that. So, uh, yes, Vampire's Kiss, if you haven't seen that, try and find it. Anyway, next. I remember seeing parts of this movie on cable um, when I was, like, a teenager or something. This came out in 2007, I guess. So, but it just, like, seemed... I know the premise, and it just seems very funny. So, okay. If you can see the future, you can save it. Can you really? I don't know about that. Academy Award winner, Nicolas Cage. What did he... What did Nicolas Cage win an Academy Award for? Put it in the comments. Don't Google it. Guess. I'm gonna guess... Vampire... No, I'm just kidding. Um, what's the Vegas? There's like a night. Golly gee, I don't know what he would have actually gotten an Academy Award for. Wild at heart? I don't know. Peggy Sue got married? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's none that are coming to mind. Um, anyway. Nick Cage, Julian Moore, Jessica Biel join forces to bring you the heart-pounding thriller that is next. Chris Johnson, without an H, the Chris without an H, okay, earns his living in a seedy Las Vegas magic act, but his ability to see a few- Ah, oh, no, never mind. But his- mm, Matchstick Man? Family- Family Man? The Family Man? What did he do? Okay. Um. Anyway. Anyway. His ability to see a few, just a few minutes into the future is authentic. Government agent Callie Ferris, Oscar nominee, more, which like she should be a winner and probably was at this point, maybe? Like after this? Anyway. Um. Relentlessly recruits him to help thwart a terrorist group from detonizing a nuclear bomb in the heart of L.A. Will the reluctant hero join the desperate race against the clock by daring to see what is next? Featuring nonstop action, explosive special effects, I bet there are. Oh, I just thought of the Nick Cage Wicker Man. That's a funny one. Um... Adrenaline charged special features. This is an exciting adventure you won't want to miss. Uh, 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 uh. So, yeah, Jessica Beale's got her boobs. Cool. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. This guy. I could never remember his name. Who is he? Michael Shannon. He's the first guy in there. And, um, I thought Michael Shannon was someone else completely. So, anyway, that's Michael Shannon. But he's in a lot of movies that are, like, head scratchers, for sure. Bug, that's one of them. But just to see the cover here, we've got a film by Jeff Nichols, which he might have also done Bug. I don't know. But I know that this Michael Shannon guy is in a lot of Jeff Nichols films. Michael Shannon, Joel Egerton, Edgerton. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that name. Uh, Kirsten Dunst, Adam Driver, Sam Shepard. So, supernatural thriller. Roy's young son, Alton, Alton, has mysterious powers coveted by religious extremists. On the run, the two escape in the night, and as the chase escalates into a nationwide manhunt involving the highest levels of the government, 
Roy will risk everything to help Alton find his ultimate purpose, whatever that may be. Critically acclaimed writer, director Jeff Nichols explores faith and the bounds of love and trust in this provocative film that is as supernatural as it is intimately human. Wow. So that seemed um, interesting and or entertaining in one way or another. But there's like a lot of really good actors, so cool. Um, another one I had never heard of, but it has Shane West. It has Sarah Hay, I don't know who that is, Stephen Lang, and Bruce Dern, Mid-Century, Murder by Design. Is it called Mid-Century Murder by Design, I guess? Um, but yeah, this came out uh, in 2022? What? Uh, glass walls can hide many secrets. Can they? Academy Award nominee, here we go again. Bruce Dern. Okay, so we actually say Nebraska. I think that's what he was nominated for. Stephen Lang, Avatar. And Shane West, Gotham, I would say Shane West, uh, Walk to Remember, Shane West, Whatever It Takes, Shane West, Get Over It, Shane West, Once and Again, I couldn't think of the name of that show. Anyway, Stylish, intense horror thriller. Looking for a change one weekend, ER doctor Alice and her husband Tom rent a glamorous mid-century modern home designed by architect Frederick Banner. As they investigate the home, they learn that Banner and his two wives died mysteriously. Yet their spirits are very much alive. <laughs> As they meet Banner's deranged son, they realize they must escape the home or succumb to its madness. Mwah, uh, uh. So that sounds silly and looks fun. We got five more. Tell me in the comments if you think I uh, wasted my money, these three dollars a piece. I'll probably be able to at least, like, if there are not even worth re-watching, I'll be able to sell them on eBay and at least get my money back, I would hope. <laughs> um, this one is Incarnate. Unrated. Aaron Eckert, Eckert and uh, Carice Van Houten. Karis? I don't know. But it looks funny. And it uh, stars as Dr. Seth Ember, an unconventional exorcist who uses science instead of religion to tap into the minds of the possessed. Yep. To remove the demon from their subconscious. Oh, well, when you put it that way. When an 11 year old boy becomes possessed by a creature of unspeakable evil. Ember enters the mind of the boy to attack the vengeful demon, but he finds himself facing the battle of his life and horrors of his own past. Oh, I'm getting like 1408 kind of vibes. Um, so yeah, again, could be, who knows? Don't judge a Blu-ray by its cover. This one, Ill Final Contagion, Contagium, uh, The Infected Will Find You. This one actually, I feel like will be good, I think. Have you seen this? Jeez Louise. Just looked at the time that I've been talking for. Um, a rogue scientist in Chile illegally spreads Toxic and biochemical substances by way of contaminated money leading to a worldwide pandemic. When did this come out? Yikes. Artwork from 2020. Where's the year? 
2019. <gasps> oh, wow. Okay, anyway. First, the viruses spread in Italy when two women steal a contaminated case of cash. Ooh, say that five times fast. Contaminated case of cash, contaminated case of cash, contaminated case of cash, contaminated case of cash, contaminated case of cash. Then in Kosovo, contaminated case of cash in Kosovo. <laughs> um, okay, well, okay. So, oh gosh, okay. Okay, so this is just how it's worded. This is not like an appropriate term to use, I don't think, but maybe in different regions, it's okay. I don't know. Then in Kosovo, a transsexual, that's what they call this person, pays for surgery only to find that all of her injection sites have been infected with the virus. <sighs> Lastly, a father in Germany tries out <laughs> extreme methods to save his contaminated son from succumbing to the virus. So it sounds like a real, um, hootenanny. No, it sounds like it'll be kind of rough, but also maybe fun if there's like, you know, like virus zombies, which by the looks of this, I feel like there could be. So then we got this. If she screams, an evil lurks within. And it's literally five people's names that I do not recognize at all. Um, they don't really look familiar. And this came out in 20... 2020? One thing says 2020, one thing says 2021. So I guess 2020. Cassie, with a K, A-S-S-I because she's not like the other Cassies, is a struggling actress who is short, who is short the money she needs to pay her rent when her friend presents her with the option to work for a weekend on a weed farm up in the hills of Northern California. Sounds like the perfect plan. Little do they know an ancient evil has been unleashed. Uh-oh and is taking its revenge on the inhabitants of the rural area one by one. Uh-oh. Cassie and her friends find themselves facing terror after terror as threats both human and supernatural stalk them. Uh-oh. Together they must fight to make it off of the mountain. There's a mountain? Did I know that? Up in the hills. Oh. Off of the mountain alive. So that just sounded like a fun time. I really like David Arquette. Is it because I'm obsessed with Scream and he like fell in love on the set of Scream and like it's just a truly lovely story and it makes me think so highly of Wes like pushing him to be like, no, you're good enough. <laughs> Ask her out, even though she was way hotter than you. Anyway. R.I.P. Wes Craven. King of horror. Uh, this is high voltage. Has nothing to do with Wes Craven. Revenge is worth dying for. Is it? I don't know. Um, but we got... We got Arquette and Luke Wilson, which just is, sounds funny. Some other names that I don't know. Um, an emerging rock band managed by industry vet Jimmy Clean. Clean, K-L-E-E-N. Love it. Played by Arquette. Uh, strike up a deal with record exec Rick Rowland. Love that name. Played by Wilson. Sure. Record exec. Sure. Things take a sinister turn when he when the band's lead singer Rachel and her mother Barb are struck by lightning and killed I don't remember reading this Rachel is brought back to life but she is different than before you think 
Lightning courses through her veins and she uses her new strange electrical powers to drain the life from men, turning it into electrifying stage performances. Love that. Good for her. But just how far are the band willing to go to make it? Dot, dot, dot. Oh, and it comes with director's commentary. So bonus Jonas. It looks so silly. It just looks so silly. And then last but certainly not least, I haven't heard of this one. I didn't know anything about it. It looked cool. The Hunt. Betty Gilpin and Hilary Swank, which um, Hilary Swank is hot in case that was ever a question definitely hot and um anyway clever gory often very funny fun and ultra violent action movie in this subversive satire a group of elites gather for the very first time at a remote manor house to hunt ordinary americans for sport but the elite's master plan is about to be derailed because one of the hunted, Crystal, knows the hunter's game better than they do. She turns the tables on the killers, picking them off one by one as she makes her way toward the mysterious woman at the center of it all. There we go. Hillary Swank. Um, so it sounded... Sorry, I keep shaking you. It sounded kind of like um, You're Next at least like similar vibes how it's like tables are turned and things you keep kind of like guessing and you're like yeah get them they were gonna kill you so you kill them first so uh love that and that's it that was the last one tell me what you think did i pay too much do you think i'm gonna get my money back on any of the stinkers if there are any stinkers um, have you seen any of them? And, um, what is the most recent movie or thing, movie or music that you have bought recently? Be kind and rewind.